We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. So I wanted to come out here and do an update on the whole Steve Stevens situation. I had did a video on it the other day and you know, I was really upset in that video of course because of what this man did, how he killed that innocent older gentleman. And um, basically he has been caught and he was caught via suicide. And I wanna kinda break down to you guys what happened. So what they're saying is that basically this overweight Q, okay, he had the audacity to pull up to a Pennsylvania McDonald's and order a 20 piece McNugget and a small french fry. Bitch, really, you gonna eat all them damn nuggets and then just get a small fry? I'm assuming he must have asked for a Diet Coke as well. But anyways, while his stupid ass was ordering food and shit, you know, how do, how do you go to McDonald's and you know the whole world is looking for your ass? Like, what kind of shit is that? So while his greedy ass is waiting to be served his meal, basically one of the McDonald's employees recognized him. And so she told her manager, like, I think that's the guy. So they decide to basically keep him waiting. They're like, oh, you know, we have to drop some new fries. Um, we're cutting up the fries now. You know, just give us a moment. So while they're trying to stall him out, the other employee runs and they call the police and let the police know that they believe that this is Steve Stevens. So while he's waiting for his food, he sees the police coming into the McDonald's, you know, uh, area and he just hightails it out of there and the police end up chasing him. And that's when he decided to, I guess, pull over or while he was driving. I don't know, but he shot himself in the head and he went out like the fucking coward that he was. And the way I suspected that he would go out because he's a coward. It's unfortunate he didn't kill himself before he ran into that older gentleman. 20 piece order of chicken McNuggets and French fries is what led cops to the Cleveland Facebook killer. He was at the McDonald's up there and I seen him in there ordering his food and I was like, oh, he looked familiar. This woman says she recognized the suspected murderer, Steve Stevens at a McDonald's in Erie, Pennsylvania, while he was on the run from the cops. So did the drive through worker who immediately called 911 and informed her boss. He got to the second window of the drive through. Uh, we told him he was waiting on his fries for a minute just to kind of buy some time for the cops if it actually was him. And uh, he said he had no time to wait, he had to go. And at that point he took his chicken McNuggets and left. A police chase ensued. This is surveillance video of part of it recorded on cameras set up for security measures at an auto body shop. During the chase is when investigators say Stevens shot and killed himself inside his car. I was happy and mad because he killed himself. He should have stood a face what he did, but the coward he was, he couldn't do that. The suspect from Cleveland was on the run for nearly 48 hours after police say he randomly shot and killed 74-year-old Robert Godwin, then posted the video to Facebook. Those in the area were relieved the search came to an end. We're just glad that it's over with, where the community can sleep, people, kids can come back out, and they don't have to be afraid no more. Many others, including the family of the victim, are now left with many unanswered questions as to why the killing of this grandfather had to happen in the first place. You know, so that whole situation is crazy, but I want to say kudos to that McDonald's employee, kudos to the McDonald's manager who decided to put themselves at risk by even, you know, trying to stall this man because they all knew he was crazy as hell. They knew he was armed and dangerous, but they didn't just let him go. They tried to stall him and try to get the police out there as quick as possible. So in my eyes, they are heroes. Had they not seen him and spotted him and, you know, knew to call the police, he could have been out here killing more people. I honestly believe that these McDonald's employees, the ones who caught him and caught the police, they should get that $50,000 reward that the FBI was offering. That's the right thing to do. Y'all need to give them that money because they're the ones who gave the tip and got the guy eventually quote unquote caught, okay? So they definitely deserve that money. Kudos to y'all for being brave. Kudos to y'all for putting yourself and your safety at risk just to help the public. So now on top of Steve Stevens getting caught and killing himself, um, Joy Lane, his ex-girlfriend, she now feels safe enough to come out of hiding and talk about the situation. So she did a really quick interview with CNN and she also met with Robert Godwin's family and apologized and, you know, she basically said everything I stated in my original video, that she was receiving all types of death threats. She was being called every name in the book. And on top of that, people are wishing her death and saying that it should have been her instead. And she's saying that right now she feels 
really bad and really guilty because the last thing that that older gentleman said was her name. And like I told you guys in my original video, the reason why Steve Stevens punk ass did that, he did that so this will always affect this woman. Because every time, you know, she thinks about that situation, she's going to feel guilty. So this guy definitely had all the signs and the traits of an abuser. Even if he wasn't physically abusive, he was at the very least mentally abusive. I mean, even now when you hear that name Joy Lane, you're always going to think back to this Easter murder. You know, so this whole situation is so crazy. Y'all go ahead and check out her interview really quick and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I've got a lot of negative comments. I've, I've been called almost every cuss word in the book. I've been told that... Um, I'm the one who should have died. He should have killed me. Last time I talked to him was Saturday night around nine o'clock we talked and he told me he had quit his job and he was um, leaving the state. you not your fault I love you and thank you I just really wanted to send my condolences and I'm very sorry this happened to you guys we are sorry too but not your fault I feel bad I feel you know like the last thing that he would have said was my name and didn't know me or why he was saying it and that's been difficult Hashtag Joy Lane, Joy Lane Massacre. I don't know if I know how to be Joy Lane anymore. I don't know um, how to pick up all the pieces of my world at the moment. So now in other news, I wanna come on here and talk about the whole Aaron Hernandez situation. Now this is crazy. I woke up this morning to see Aaron Hernandez trending all over Twitter. And I'm like, what the hell Aaron Hernandez done did now? He probably done damn killed the guard. We all know he's a damn sick murdering son of a bitch, okay? But that's not what happened. What happened is that basically it's been announced today that Aaron Hernandez killed himself. He ended up hanging himself in his jail cell and they found him this morning around three o'clock in the morning. So the whole situation is just insane. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip really quick and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Former New England Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez killed himself in prison overnight just a few days ago. He was acquitted of murdering two men, but he was serving a life sentence for the killing of Odin Lloyd. This new development is going to have some implications. We're covering every angle of what could be coming next. Julian Pixoto is in Bristol County talking to corrections officials about the case. But first, Eyewitness reporter Jared Kleiner, live at the prison where Hernandez was being held. Patrick, good afternoon. Well, as you say, just a shocking outcome here five days after his double murder acquittal that happened on Friday and with a 2015 murder conviction appeal still ahead of him. Convicted murderer and former Patriot star Aaron Hernandez dead at the age of 27. The Massachusetts Department of Corrections saying staff found Hernandez hanged from a bed sheet attached to his cell window at 3.05 this morning here at the Sousa Baranowski facility in Shirley, Mass. The DOC says there were various items jammed in the door of a single inmate cell to prevent entry. Hernandez pronounced dead at UMass Lemonster about an hour after he was found at 4.07 a.m. Now, local state Senator Jamie Eldridge just spoke outside the prison. He says he has legislation pushing for a review of prison-related suicide. Massachusetts has among the highest suicide rates for prisoners and correction officers. And while obviously none of us have any idea why Mr. Hernandez committed suicide, I really do think this moment underscores the need uh, to reform and improve the conditions in prisons, especially those who are in solitary confinement. So among the questions swirling today, one of the more prominent ones is what happens to Aaron Hernandez's 25 murder conviction, uh, which again had appeal forthcoming before the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. Well, there is precedent here in Massachusetts that if a defendant dies post-conviction, but before his or her appeal is heard by an appeals court, that that conviction is vacated. In fact, that is what happened to Father John Gagan, who was housed here at Sousa Baranowski when he was beaten to death by a fellow inmate in 2000. 2003. He was a convicted Catholic priest, uh, convicted of pedophilia related offenses, and the Massachusetts Appeals Court indeed uh, vacated his conviction later on because of his death. Patrick. 
Jared, uh, Hernandez's defense attorney, Jose Baez, put out a statement this morning about Aaron Hernandez's death. Apparently, Baez now wants some sort of investigation to be opened up. What can you tell us about that? Well, that's right, Patrick. And in this statement, curiously, Baez does not use the term suicide at all in the course of the paragraph that he put out. He just calls what happened to Aaron Hernandez, or his fate, rather, Aaron Hernandez's death, uh, pushing for a thorough and transparent investigation, as you say, uh, by the authorities into uh, what happened here. And again, there will be speculation, surely, and I'm sure there already is today, about what happened in that cell. It might be a considerable amount of time before we have further clarity on Aaron Hernandez his last moments. Another thing to mention, though, Patrick, Jose Baez saying in the course of that statement uh, that the defense team, as you can imagine, shocked by what happened here, saying that there was no indication from Aaron Hernandez, written, spoken, any of the above, that he was planning on doing anything like this. For now, uh, we're going to have continuing coverage, as you can imagine, as the day continues. For now, live in Shirley, Massachusetts, with the Mobile Newsroom this noontime, Jared Planner, Eyewitness News. All right, so you guys just watched that news clip. So, you know, a lot of people are comparing these two stories, the whole Aaron Hernandez suicide and Steve Stevens suicide. Is there some type of connection? There's all types of conspiracy theories out there. Everybody's talking about some damn stay woke. You know, the whole Aaron Hernandez thing, it, it does make me give this whole situation the side eye. Now, he had been serving a life sentence for the 2013 murder. But as you guys all know, he was just acquitted this past Friday of a 2012 double slaying. Okay. And in that case, it was where he was basically upset because somebody spilled a drink on him at the nightclub and he ended up killing two people and he got off last Friday. And we all saw the pictures of him in the courtroom and we saw his beautiful daughter, you know, she's looking at her father. You know, the whole situation is just sad. So he got away with that case and his lawyer was also promising that basically he was going to get that conviction of him sitting in prison for the rest of his life. They were basically planning on getting that conviction overturned. And they're saying that Aaron Hernandez may get out. So that scared a lot of people like, damn, this is insane. Like this dude could get out and there's so much evidence that he was behind all of these killings and killed these people himself. You know, so the whole situation, like I said, is crazy. You know, the thing that's always bothered me with the whole Aaron Hernandez situation is that he had everything. You know, he was one of the most athletic, promising football players out there. I mean, fine as hell, body from the gods. Okay, let me keep it real. Handsome, nice body, athletic. You know, you're playing for the New England Patriots. Everybody knows who you are. He was an outstanding college player. You know, he, he was able to live, you know, in this short life, dreams that some people would never, ever get to live. You know, I mean, people want to make it into the NFL and they never make it. They try so hard and they never get that blessing. And this guy was so blessed. He basically had the opportunity to be one of the biggest American Latino sports players. You know, that had looked really good on the Hispanic community. You know, so the whole situation is crazy. He had very successful seasons. It, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense that he chose to go down this route where, you know, Monday through Friday, you're a football player, you're doing the right thing. But then on the weekends, you're a damn assassin. It's like, dude, really? Like, how, how much of a psychopath do you have to be to be out here killing folks over a spilt drink? I mean, to me, that's what makes it even more scary is the fact that this man was wealthy, he was blessed, he had a career, and he was still willing to play gangster. You know, I can understand if he was just some broke dude on the street, struggling, had a horrible life. You know, I can understand people in those situations turning into psychopaths, but this is a man with so many blessings, and he just basically just threw everything down the drain. You know, I'm not condoning anything that he did. I'm not in support of Aaron Hernandez. You guys know that. Every opportunity that's been out there, I've, you know, I've clowned and made a little bit of jokes and shit like that. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite and be like, oh, I'm shedding tears because he committed suicide. No, I'm not. Okay. But I will say that I'm shocked that he would kill himself. Even though I'm not saddened by his suicide, I will say that I'm shocked. Because the thing that doesn't make sense to me is that they were just in talks the other day that this current case that he's in there for may be overturned and that they were going to look at possible prosecutor misconduct, evidence tampering in the initial case. You know, he was no saint, but he had money. And that's one thing about America is that money talks, bullshit walks. And the wealthy tend to get away with a lot of fucking crimes. And I think his lawyer basically had a lot of money. He had a lot of, you know, notoriety. And he was probably able to shine a light on the court system's flaws. So I think to me, it goes a lot deeper than him, you know, just killing himself. And I know y'all gonna be like, this damn conspiracy theorist ass chick, if she don't take this damn tin hat off, 
I'm just saying, I'm looking at all angles here, okay? Because when I looked at his demeanor in court last Friday, he didn't come off looking emotional. He didn't come off like he was suicidal. And the fact that, you know, he may have been getting off, it's just weird that all of a sudden now he hung himself. And how did he have time to do this? You know, it's like they said he put some stuff up against the door. It's like was nobody watching him. I don't know. I just find the whole situation just strange that he just mysteriously hung himself after his defense attorney said that they were going to come out with all types of evidence basically showing that court system in a bad light. And, you know, a lot of people are also saying that there's been a lot of overturned court cases in that particular district in the past few years. Now, on top of that, you know, like I said, I didn't really see anything emotional from him where he looked like he was depressed or sad. So like I said, on top of that, he also had just beat that double murder case. And we all know that the attorney that he's using is Casey Anthony's attorney who got her off, by the way. So I don't know. It just seems a little bit suspicious to me that all of a sudden he killed himself. But either way, this is a terrible legacy for his poor daughter. And the only memories that this young girl will ever have of her father is seeing him in the courtroom or when her mother took her to go visit him him, you know, during visitation at the prison or at the jail, you know, so it's just really, really sad that, you know, these are the only members that she's going to have. And this is basically the horrible legacy that's been handed down to her. So my sympathy in this entire situation definitely goes out to his daughter. I don't feel bad for Aaron Hernandez, regardless if he killed himself or regardless if you guys believe the conspiracy theory that he was allegedly killed. I don't feel bad for him because several people lost their lives. He changed a lot of people's lives. He even shot his own homeboy in the face. And this guy's permanently disfigured and he's missing an eyeball. All because he was in a fit of rage. So Aaron Hernandez definitely had a lot of issues. This whole situation is just crazy. But let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on both of these stories. What do you guys feel about the whole Steve Stevens case and him killing himself and him getting caught by some McDonald's employees? And then how do you feel about the Aaron Hernandez case? Do you feel like it was just suicide and he was just ready to go? He was just ready to check out because he did not want to do the whole life in prison? Or do you somewhat believe some of my conspiracy where I say, you know, I just feel like something's not right. It's just weird that he would kill himself after it was announced that he may be able to get out. I mean, you would think that he'd at least want that to play out first. You know what I'm saying? Then if he's not able to get out and if the judge is not willing to overturn anything, then at that point, kill yourself. But why would you kill yourself before you even have a fighting chance? You know, so I don't know, just something ain't cleaning the buttermilk to me. So I'm gonna keep my tin hat on because I'm a G like that. <laughs> But y'all think what y'all want to think. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation. Once again, concerning Steve Stevens and Aaron Hernandez. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Hey, you guys. It's your girl, T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.